And we're back here live at the Young Arena. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, we're only able to do podcast uh, recording tonight for the uh, game from Waterloo. Um, we're uh, going through the opening uh, lineups. Uh, Mike, who have we got for starting lineup for Omaha? Starting for Omaha, we've got uh, Joey Shielden gold. We have uh, Cole Childers playing center. Uh, Thomas Dybal at left D, Christian, uh, Kyle uh, Siwa at uh, right D, Dalton Thiessen at left wing, and Zach Grun at right wing. And it looks like for the Warriors, we've got Cameron Prees. We've got Luck, Connor Luck, Sam Metcalf in the net as well as number five, Nolan Bartlett. Rounding out that starting lineup for the Waterloo Warriors, we also have number two, Dylan Johnson on defense, and number 23, Trevor Katz. Teams are lining up at their respective benches now. They'll get their helmets strapped on and then proceed to the center ice face-off circle where we'll get this varsity tilt underway. Meaningful points this weekend for both of these teams. Omaha would like to continue on their 11-game winning streak. And the Warriors are, are playing uh, Western Division uh, top opponent, an opponent that uh, competed very well against them last season and uh, hopefully this season as well. The bandit official is Mr. Cook from this area. He'll be dropping the puck. Cole Childers in the face -off, on the face-off dot against Cameron Prees. Puck is dropped. Dropped back into the Waterloo zone. Luck retreating. Sends it up the half wall. Pinched in by Casey Seaway. Gets a shot on net. Metcalf with a save. Diebold now with it. Drives the puck low into the zone for Thiessen. Thiessen cycling the puck back to Childers. And now back up to the left point. Could Seaway with it now. Shot on goal. Metcalf with a save. Waterloo trying to glass it out, see what picks it up. He's deep in the zone now to Childers. Childers loses the handle, and Thiessen is taken out along the half wall on the left wing side. Puck is dumped back into the right wing corner, and Dieball is able to keep it in. Puck still in the zone. Jesse Clark with a wraparound attempt. Now the puck's jumped back in the Omaha end. Degnan with it. Gains the red line and dumps in. Clark now with it. Drops back on the half wall to Devin Renault. Renault playing the puck back to Clark and loses the handle. Waterloo with control now. Gaining the zone into neutral ice. Omaha goes D to D and back in on the attack. Waterloo now into Omaha's end. Playing the puck behind the cage. Clark takes it, gets it out to Renault into neutral ice, and the puck is deflective out of play 
And this faceoff will be in the neutralized zone. This Omaha team, Mike, uh, looks like it's... Uh, we, we thought before the game that uh, they may be a little loose or a little nervous energy, but uh, first uh, couple shifts, they've come out to play. Sustained uh, forechecking pressure in the Waterloo uh, defensive zone. Uh, Omaha had uh, the bulk of that zone time. It's 15-22, and uh, they had the majority of that time in that end. Faceoff now, just outside the Omaha defensive blue line. Cardona with it, gains the red line, tries to chip it in. Chipped back out by Waterloo. And Zach Krause on the retreat. Sends the puck into neutral ice. Sloan loses the handle. Now he sends it into neutral ice and hits Braxton Hatch on a, on a rush. Hatch taken out at the Waterloo defensive blue line. Cardona sends the puck in on the left wing side. Gets around the half wall. Berkowitz in there for checking now. Pucks out into neutral ice. Kraus gets it, gains the red line, and dumps back into the left wing corner. Johnson now retreating, number two, plays it up the half wall. Hits, hits Prees right on the tape. Prees gaining speed. Pucks taken away from Cameron Prees by Dalton Thiessen. Thiessen tries to plays up, play up the half wall, gains the puck, moves it forward to Cole Childers. Childers gains the red line and dumps in. Metcalf playing it behind the Waterloo cage. And now the puck is chipped to the neutral ice where Diebold retreats. Tries to make a cross ice pass and is deflected in the defensive zone. Tyson now with it in neutral ice. Plays it back to his D and there's a whistle. Waterloo started to take a little bit of pressure there to uh, Omaha after their uh, that last shift change. And uh, these two teams, I think, uh, you're going to notice tonight, they're pretty evenly matched and uh, so far. And uh, we, we had an opportunity to watch Waterloo in a game against Sioux City a few weeks ago. Not as quite not quite as deep as they've been, but that top line can compete with anybody in the league. Absolutely. And they'll yeah. get their share. Omaha's now in the Waterloo zone. Casey Siwa playing it down to the corner. Tries to hit Devin Renault. We have a stoppage in play here. Looks like the puck might have left the playing surface. This faceoff will be on the Omaha right wing faceoff circle. Jesse Clark on the draw, just to the glove side of Metcalf. Kemp is the lineman, linesman. He's tossing guys out of the circle. Puck is dropped. Omaha wins the draw. Quick little shot by Cody Walters. Metcalf with the save. Shot now. Comes out of the zone. Gains, gains possession and neutralized. Makes a nice rush and a shot on goal. Goey, Joey Schultz's first save of the game. Yeah, he had to be sharp on that. The way, the way that puck uh, ricocheted off those end boards, Mike, uh, kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Mason City of earlier in the year where uh, they have lively boards and uh, they, they popped one in on us by just bouncing it off the back and into the net. Home ice advantage uh, with the dasher boards and, and things like that. Noah Payton now rushing the puck, number 81, gaining the zone. A lot of ice here for the Swift Skaters. Olympic ice sheet, little, little wider ice than what uh, Omaha typically plays on. Waterloo Moves the puck, Connor Luck into neutral ice with it. Back to Johnson, Johnson chips it up. Intercepted by Childers, Childers makes a nice move, almost had a two on one. Comes back to Peyton, Peyton plays it back up to Groon. Groon's got, got room on the half wall, he gets rubbed out by Connor Luck, number 15. Thiessen now playing in the left wing side corner. Comes out to the point, Cardona dumps the puck back in. Childers first one to it. Waterloo tries to clear and does so. Prees now on the four check. Intercepted uh, the pass by Jared Cardona. Prees makes contact. Separates but Omaha gains possession. Now the puck is stolen away by number 12, Noah Roach. Waterloo's leading scorer. Puck is Trickles into the uh, Waterloo zone, and Johnson will retreat. 
He'll gain possession. He makes an escape move and rings the puck up the half wall. Puck's moved out into neutral ice where it's intercepted by Cardona. Cardona leaves it at the Waterloo blue line. Waterloo now with it. Yearling down into the left wing corner. Dumps it out front and out of the zone. Johnson retreating. Goes D to D. Chip pass by Yearling is intercepted by Zach Kraus. And the puck is moved up. Sloan plays it. Omaha goes in offsides, has to tag up. Yearling drops it back to Johnson as they regroup. Johnson again, moving it up the half wall. Puck moved down the right wing side. Intercepted now by Dybald. Dybald gains his own to Cody Walters. Cody Walters in a race. Gets beat to the puck. Big hit by Casey Siwa on number 11. Cade Snoglin. Physicality in this game is picking up. Absolutely. I was starting to wonder how, uh, how Omaha would match up to Waterloo's uh, physical size and stature, and uh, so far they're not backing down. Now, Omaha can play physical as well. Clark gets taken down on the half wall, and number 33, Devin Renault, gets cross-checked by... Connor Luck. This is Luck's first game back after an injury. Puck comes out to Beal. Beal gets a shot on goal. It's a little wide of Joel Shue, but he redirects it to Stephen Degnan, number 12, who goes D to D behind the net to Noah Payton. Payton plays it out into neutral ice to Devin Renault, who dumps in. And Cole Childers on the forecheck. Waterloo regroups, breaks out, goes D to D and attempts to move the puck up their right wing wall. Another drop pass into their zone. Cute little play there. Waterloo's trying to glass and out. Omaha's able to take away the lanes in neutral ice. Shot on goal goes wide of the net by Dalton Thiessen. Number 26, Drew Westfall plays the puck behind the cage and now it's picked up by Cameron Preeze. Preeze gains speed. He's out into neutral ice, makes a nifty move. He's into the zone. And the puck is taken away. Now Jared Cardona with it. He gains the red line, gains the blue line, tries to maneuver between two defensemen and is poke checked away. Waterloo now with it into neutral ice. Loses the handle and back out. Steck loses the puck right in front of the Omaha bench. Picked up again, retreating, trying to regroup. Dropped into the Omaha zone. Casey Siwa goes D to D. To Zach Kraus. Sloan now with it. Gains the red line and dumps the puck in. End to end action right now. Puck is being moved out now by number 12, Noah Roach. Gives it to Shot. Shot loses the handle. Comes out to Degnan. Degnan plays the puck out in a neutral ice to Braxton Hatch. Braxton Hatch. Gains the Waterloo blue line. Comes out. Shot on goal by Sloan. And a good save by Sam Metcalf. Omaha's making a quick change on that play. Smart change. Jesse Clark on the four check. Puck comes out into neutral ice. Casey Siwa indirect passes it to Braxton Hatch. Braxton's going to be coming off on a line change here. We've got Devin Renault with Clark. Diebold Siwa and Cody Walters. Bouncing shot from Diebold and Sam Metcalf on the short hop. This is Michael Hughes and you're listening to the Omaha Junior Lancer Radio Network. This faceoff will be to the blocker side of Sam Metcalf. The left wing faceoff circle, Jesse Clark on the draw. Puck is dropped. Knocked into the left wing corner. Clark out with it. Stick handles, gives it to Stephen Degnan, goes D to D. Payton with a shot, gets blocked. Back out. Noah Payton again with it, makes a nice move, escape move off the half wall. Cannot feather that pass through. Luck now with it, 15, gains the blue line. He's in the Omaha zone, makes a good net front pass, and Joe Shield covers up for the save. Looks like we might have a penalty too. Interference call. Who's it on? Looks like number 33, Devin Renault, is going off 
Two-minute minor for interference. Waterloo will be on the Associated Fire Protection power play. This face-off will be the blocker side of Joel Shield. Cole, Cole Childers with the draw. Drops it back for his defenseman, Casey Siwa, and he indirects the puck right out in to uh, neutralize. Where number four, uh, 24, Dylan Stetch, plays it on the right wing side. Roach in. Shot from 35. Brandon Yearling, he's their power play goal leader. Dieballed with it. Indirect shot off the half wall and out into neutral ice. And Waterloo is forced to retreat into their end to regroup. Dieball now with it. Same scenario. Gains the zone into neutral ice. Waterloo is stuck deep and has to regroup in their own zone. To Johnson. To Luck. Luck loses the handle. Looking for a pass. Drops it up to number 27, Almeras. Almeras handles in, tries to hit the weak side forward, number 23, Trevor Katz. Can't, can't gain the handle and get a shot off. Deg, Dieball now with it. Oh! Dieball uh, backhands the, the puck out of, out of play and almost hits a fan. Well, he certainly cleared, cleared the zone. Uh, Stop to play uh, allows Omaha to regroup a little bit and uh, get some much needed uh, line changes. Uh, Luck is over uh, trying to uh, claim delay of game for uh, clearing the puck. Uh, he's not going to win that one. It, it was an honest clear. He tried to, Dybal tried to get it off the glass, and it was just a little high. In this facility, it's hard to get those calls because uh, the glass is six feet around the entire arena, so um, it's hard to get the puck out. Right, right. Face off to Schultz blocker side. Cold Shoulders with it. Cardona plays it up. The puck ends up into neutral ice, and back on the retreat is Cameron Priest. Priest takes it in his defensive zone. Up the right wing wall to Almeras. Maris loses the handle. Comes to Luck. Luck makes a nice move around Dalton Thiessen. Comes in, gets a shot on goal. And Joe Schuld with the save. Nice to see Joey uh, looking sharp the, the, so far early in this game. And... Uh, you know, as the PK goes, uh, Omaha's not doing too poorly uh, on the penalty kill. Looks like 27 seconds left in uh, Renault's uh, penalty, and uh, Omaha will be even strength. Omaha trying to kill off this first penalty in this game. Devin Renault off two minutes for interference. Puck goes into the corner, number 12. Noah Roach with it, moves it out to number 14, Kyle Schott. They go D to D, Steck tries to fish it through. Ends up on Dalton Thiessen. Cole Childers picks it up in a neutral ice. He's got some speed. Drops it back, and Shot has it now. Goes D to D, back to Shot. And Jesse Clark intercepts. Pope checks the puck away. Clark now with it in the Waterloo zone. Loses the handle. Tries to play it off his feet. Waterloo gains control and indirects the puck into neutral ice. Siwa now with it, tries to forward it to uh, Cody Walters, number 14. He gets taken out of the play. Clark now with it on the four check. Sustained pressure here. Up the half wall to Shot. Shot plays it out in neutral ice. Dieballed for Omaha now with it, number two. Moves it up to Cody Walters, and he indirects the puck into the Waterloo zone. Waterloo sends it back out into neutral ice. And Steck now plays it behind the Waterloo cage. Up to the half wall and into neutral ice. Dieball now with it. He gains the zone. Tries to hit Jesse Clark and the puck is intercepted by number 11, Cade Sogling. Cody Walters now with it. In his own defensive zone on the left wing side. Dieball gains control and Siwa plays the puck off the glass and barely crosses the line for an icing call. This puck will come back into the Omaha zone and be faced off to Joel Schul's glove side. Coming up in the first intermission, Mike, uh, we're hoping to be joined by uh, Corey Ellers of the uh, Omaha JV team and uh, we'll uh, talk to him about his Christmas break and how his season's going so far and uh, we'll uh, look at uh, current uh, scores in the Midwest High School Hockey League. 
Sounds great, Mike. Omaha wins the draw. Still in their end. Waterloo now with it. Cameron Prees out. He's behind the net. Gains control. Scrum for the puck behind the Omaha cage. Out front. Shot on goal. 23. Trevor Katz with a good forehand shot on Joel Schuld. And Joel Schuld covers up for this Omaha save. Shots are three for Waterloo and four for Omaha with 4.04 left in this first period. Childers being tied up by Preece. Puck comes to Degnan. Degnan plays it up for Thiessen. Thiessen tries to gain the Waterloo zone. He's offside. Brings the puck back out. Gruen gets it. And Childers goes in offside. Sounds like we have a lot of officials in the stands tonight. <laughs> yes, there always there usually is. <laughs> Although uh, I think the reason why uh, Tyson wasn't uh, called offside is because it went off a Waterloo stick b before it crossed over. And he did immediately come back out of the zones on a tag up. So this puck will be just uh, drawn just outside the uh, Waterloo zone on the uh, left wing Omaha side. They go D to D Waterloo. 24 is bringing it up. That's Dylan Steck. He drops it back into the Omaha zone. Jared Cardona now with it. Escapes. Tr loses the handle behind the net. Omaha's players, wingers, defensemen, they got to be moving their feet here. Noah uh, Roach. You know, Cardona tried to tried to come out and escape the one, one side and uh, look for an outlet pass, and uh, Omaha's wingers are just standing on the boards, not moving their feet. Um, they're going to have a tough day uh, beating this wa Waterloo team if they're just standing around. Little lackluster play in their defensive zone right now. Jesse Clark with the draw, wins it to Sewell on the half wall. He plays it back out to Clark. Now back down behind the Omaha net. Walters on the half wall, can't get to the puck. Casey Siwa, Siwa's got a rush. He gains the red line. He's in the Waterloo zone, and he's first to the puck. Throws it back out. Renault gets it, throws it into the right wing corner, and it's tossed back out. De uh, Diebold now with it, moves it up to 35 Siwa. Siwa comes in, gets the puck poke checked away. Shot now with it. He's got some space, and it's it's stick it's uh, poke checked away. Uh, he goes down on the play, but no call. Was that Devin Renault that poke checked it? Uh, I no, I think it was Jesse Clark. Jesse, I saw, yeah. I saw a three in there. Yeah. Shot was moving pretty fast. Now Waterloo behind the net. Indirected off the half wall and into neutral ice. Luck now with it. Makes a move. He's a good defenseman. Finds weak side forward. He drops a pass to Cameron Prees, who drops another pass. And the puck goes from the point into the net. That all started on a developing play. Uh, Omaha not back checking quite hard enough and then uh, you know, couldn't pick up the man. Two drop passes, and I believe the goal scorer is number 23, Trevor Katz. Joey overplayed the angle off the first, uh, first drop pass, and that puck just kind of floated into the back of the net. May, I, I don't think it was a redirect. It almost acted like it was, but I don't. I, th I think it cleanly beat them. 2:03 left in this first period. Waterloo one, Omaha zero. Luck again with it behind his own cage in the Waterloo zone. Pucks played by Zach Grun to Cole Childers. Childers tries a stick handle, gets the puck poke checked away to Cardona. Cardona plays it down to Grun and Grun into the corner for. Childers. Childers back out to Zach Krause, who gets a good opportunity wide of the net. Put the pucks on the net. Cardona again with it. The left point gets a great shot on goal, and Sam Metcalf with the save. You know, this Omaha team, if they can get the shots from uh, from the point and get them on net, uh, Metcalf's giving out some rebounds. They just got to get some traffic in there. We talked in pregame a little bit about crashing the net and uh, getting some interference there, and sometimes, you know, it's not a bad idea to get physical enough in front of the net to not knock the net off. Uh, it kind of rattles goaltenders and, and uh, it lets them know that he's going to have sustained pressure down there. Absolutely, yeah. Clark plays the puck up the half wall back to Cardona. Cardona dumps it back in, hits the linesman who's standing in the way. Now he's gaining 
The lineman is out of the zone where he should be. That puck's got to get deeper in the zone. Hard to do when you're trying to get it through a linesman. Puck's now in the Omaha end, being rattled around. Sloppy play right now, but no one can seem to get the, get the handle on it. Clark now loses control. Roach with it, gets a shot on goal, just wide of the net. Luck with a, with a pass that came off the, the indirect wall, and he got a good slap shot on Joe Schuld. Schuld makes the cover up. Yeah, you were talking about kind of sloppy play there, Mike, and uh, it's interesting. You know, Omaha started out the uh, period uh, skating hard and controlling the play, and uh, right now it's almost with that goal. They've uh, kind of, kind of, you can tell a little bit maybe they're a little down, but, uh, you know, Coach Blazik, he's going to get them in the locker room here in between periods and, you know, get after him and uh, readjust his game plan and uh, hopefully come out and execute. These are the types of things that uh, you don't look forward to after a long break. Uh, they haven't played competitive hockey in over two weeks. Puck goes down into the Waterloo zone. Zach Grun on the chase. He makes a nice play. Johnson picks the puck up, goes D to D and directly behind his own cage. Moves it towards number 24, Dylan Steck. Steck throws it into neutral ice. Dybald intercepts. He goes D to D with Thiessen. Back to Dybald. Dybald makes a nifty move around Cameron Prees. Loses his footing. And now Siwa's back on the play. Prees with the puck. He's one-on-one -on -one with Kyle Siwa. Shoots wide of the net. Now the puck comes out front. And Katz gets another opportunity. And Schuld with a cover-up. Six seconds left in the uh, opening frame. Katz is one of those players that uh, likes to, to hang around between the hash marks right in the scoring triangle between the circles. And he may, that's where he does most of his damage. Shot now on the draw. Gets a shot off the face off. Dieball now with it. Just trying to eat clock. And there sounds the buzzer. End of one. Waterloo one. Omaha zero. You're listening to the Omaha Junior Lancers Hockey Network. Plus this. Coming up next. Oh. Margarita's Mexican Restaurant. 4915 South 72nd Street, Omaha, Nebraska. 402-393-7515. Open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10.30. Proud supporters of the Omaha Junior Lancers. The Nebraska Spine Center with Dr. Eric Phillips, surgeon. Surgery, interventional pain treatment, physical therapy, custom bracing, on-site imaging. www.nebraskaspinecenter.com <laughs> Off the Bench Sports Gear. New used hockey gear, hockey gear sanitizing, skate sharpening, and much, much more. 5413 South 72nd Street, just southeast of Ralston Arena, 402-339-1895, www.offthebenchsportsgear.com. Who will inspire the student from Kearney to go to college and become a life-saving surgeon at the University of Nebraska Medical Center? Her fifth grade public school teacher. Behind every great student is a great teacher. My teacher is amazing. The 28,000 members of the Nebraska State Education Association, shaping the future of Nebraska. This message, sponsored by the Nebraska State Education Association, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. In a world where rivals are hard to find, one rivalry stands out. Midwest High School Hockey Rivalry. Omaha Junior Lancers versus Kansas City Jets and the I-29 Cup Rivalry Series. Catch the action at the Ralston Arena. Saturday, January 10th, Junior Varsity at 3 p.m. and the Varsity game is at 4.30. Second game on Sunday, January 11th, Junior Varsity at 8 a.m. and the Varsity game at 9.30. Pack the stands and show Kansas City who has the best support. Hi, ho Kermit the Frog here, and you're listening to Omaha Junior Lancer Radio Network. Plus this. Coming up next. 
Good evening, and we're back at Young Arena in Waterloo, Iowa, where the Waterloo Warriors lead the Omaha Junior Lancers one to nothing after one stanza. We're here with number 20, Corey Ellers, six foot, 375 pounds, slash forward defenseman. He's a junior out of Glenwood. How's it going there, Corey? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. We just want to ask you a few uh, questions uh, regarding the season. How do you feel about being part of this uh, team this year? Oh, I love it. You know, uh, we have a good time together. We work hard and stuff. I wouldn't want to be a part of any other team. When did you uh, when did you get started in hockey, uh, Corey? How, how young were you when you first started playing? Actually, what, what inspired you to play? It was only about four years ago, and I played roller with Owen Connor. So that's how I got into it. I transitioned into ice my freshman year. What do you think's easier, ice or, or roller? Ice. Ice is easier, yeah. Yeah, yeah roller's kind of too much friction. Yeah. <laughs> What sort of pregame ritual do you usually go through before uh, before a contest? Uh, nothing really, just retape my sticks and maybe stick in a little bit. Yeah, you like the preseason workouts, and what do you do during the season to keep uh, keep conditioned? Uh, we have weight classes at our school, so I do a lot of agility workouts and stuff like that at school. So, what do you plan during the summer months to keep yourself conditioned? Uh, you know, you got anything special planned for this summer? I'll probably be working out with the football team this summer at awesome. our school. So. Do you play football as well? or Nope. 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 Hockey takes up too much time. There you go. There you go. Got to love it. Uh, who's uh, who's your favorite team and favorite player? Uh, I like the Philadelphia Flyers, but my favorite player is Jeff Carter. Very cool. As, uh, what do you think of this game, how it's going so far? Uh, it's actually really fast-paced. Uh, it's in our zone a lot, and we're controlling it well. So. Yeah, I thought we started out pretty uh, – pretty good you know it's hard hard to say uh, you know how the momentum goes in these in these games but uh, Waterloo started a little bit back on their heels we had a lot of zone time and now it's kind of yeah. even you know yep we, they're they're leading 1-0 but I think we'll come back out and pop one in soon I hope so what uh, what are some of the things the team could work on that uh, that you're aware of some of the things that you're seeing in this first period of play uh, you know maybe some better passing just heads up plays and stuff like that we're doing good getting the puck in deep but maybe the center ice neutral zone passing what do you think about playing on uh, on the big sheet the olympic ice you think that uh, that affects the team in any way uh yeah probably because we practice on the normal size but i know a lot of kids go to drop in at moylan and they have that olympic size rink so i don't know it's just a little bit bigger yeah angles and uh, especially for defensemen you know andy was talking in pregame about playing between the dots yeah and kind of shrinking the ice uh hard to do and there's a lot of space to maneuver but once defensemen learn the angles uh, it's a lot easier to defend uh, on rushes and so on and so forth but it takes some getting used to if you're not used to practicing on it yeah the blue one looks pretty long it's, it, it, it is it's pretty wide so what do you think about playing at the Ralston Arena and the, the Omaha fans oh I love it the parents got out there the brothers and sisters it's a good time you're a junior now so you're, uh, you're in the process of uh, taking your ACTs and uh, preparing for what you're going to do after high school. What, what are your plans? I definitely want go to go to college, uh, get a degree probably in wildlife management, do something, move out to Colorado. I think that'd be fun. You like the outdoors? Are you an outdoorsman? Oh, yeah. Yeah, very good hunt and fish. Yep, with my grandpa I started a while ago. So That's fantastic. Well, we want to wish you the best of luck in uh, the next contest, which, which is right after this varsity game. Uh, JV will be playing. And uh, we're talking with uh, number 20, Corey Ellers, Omaha Junior Lancers. You're listening to the Omaha Junior Lancer Network. Olden House Contracting, custom built impressions. At Olden House Contracting, our specialty is transforming homes and leaving lasting impressions. Through quality craftsmanship and courageous design, we'll bring your vision to life. Contact us today. 402-573-8125 OldenHouseContracting.com Coming up next oh. Welcome back to Young Arena in Waterloo, Iowa We uh, with the, the score right now, Waterloo leading Omaha 1 to nothing. Uh, we're in the intermission, uh, shots are 7 to 5 in favor of Waterloo Warriors um, you were just listening to an uh, interview with uh, J.V. Uh, Corey Ellers. Uh, Midwest High School League out-of-town scoreboard for Saturday, January uh, 3rd. Uh, current games in uh, 
in progress right now. We have Sioux City, Quad City, uh, 12 minutes left in the first period. Uh, score is tied at zero. Uh, Des Moines Oak Leafs are up three to one in Mason City, and that's uh, minute 17 left in that in that game. Um, other games that uh, have finished uh, today, you've got uh, a final varsity game at, from Kansas City. Kansas City uh, whooped up on Lincoln seven to two. Uh, it was close uh, in the first period and a half, and uh, Kansas City just uh, flexed their muscle and uh, moved away from uh, Lincoln. And uh, the Kansas City uh, Jets JV team also flexed the muscle, and uh, uh, after losing a, a game to Lincoln yesterday, uh, came out and uh, uh, blanked Lincoln five to nothing. And uh, the only other game in, that's uh, an unofficial, it looks like, uh, but I'm sure it's very official, is Sioux City six, uh, Quad City zero, on uh, on that final JV game, Mike. Um, just kind of looking at uh, this first period action uh, uh, from your Omaha Junior Lancers over Waterloo. They, they started the period out pretty pretty quick and, uh, you know, show, showed some moxie, showed that they can handle the puck. And uh, uh, I don't know if it's this bigger ice or they just got tired, if it's stamina, it was, uh, bus legs or what have you. But uh, uh, end of that period didn't work out so well. Waterloo popped one in and about two minutes left in the, in the period. And uh, right now they're leading one to nothing. It was an exciting first period, and I think Omaha gained control early. They came right off the opening faceoff and uh, just had sustained forechecking pressure in Waterloo's end, and they, they didn't have an answer, Waterloo. They couldn't break the puck out. They tried to move it up the half wall. They tried the center breakout. They tried the, the glass and out. Nothing was working, and literally the first three minutes of that game were spent in Waterloo's end. However, um, Waterloo... Um, protected the net front uh, they, they stymied any uh, quality opportunity that Omaha had and just by virtue of patience were able to get right back into this game because the second half of that first period it was end to end both ways and uh, Waterloo was able to uh, make a nifty uh, play uh, with two consecutive drop passes uh, in the Omaha zone and was able to uh, beat Joey Shield on his, uh, on his uh, glove side so um, it's a one nothing game, but we've got a lot of game left. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we still have two periods of play. And, uh, you know, this Omaha team, uh, we've talked about it in prior broadcasts, uh, they're not loaded with goal scorers. They, uh, they manufacture the goals they get. they got to scrap it out. They're going to have a lot of one-goal games this season. And uh, uh, talking with Coach Andy Odo on the, on the bus ride here, he, he even that's exactly what he said. You know, we're not going to win a lot of games, you know, 6 nothing, 7 nothing. Uh, or, or eight to one. It's going to be a lot of two, one, three, two, you know, type games uh, throughout this whole season against all t all types of teams, whether they're top top end or low end. A lot of parity in the league this year. Um, like we talked about on the uh, Red Line show this week, you know, the tops down and the bottoms up, which is which, which is not a derogatory comment. It, it's simply stating that. There's not as many, you know, elite scoring type players, but there's a lot of really good quality support players, players that have good skills that, that have to grind out these games. So consequently, we've seen a lot of two to one games, three to two games, four to three games, a lot of one goal games. And uh, it comes down to who wants it more and who's willing to play with grit and intensity to, to gain the victory. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a quick break here. You're listening to Junior Lancer Hockey on the Junior Lancer Radio Network. Next, don't go anywhere. Foster parents are good people. Foster care benefited me in a lot of ways. It opened up my eyes to see where I wanted to go to in the future. Someone that I barely knew was opening her arms and her home to me. That was when I knew there are good people out there. Foster parents are needed all across Nebraska. Please call 1-800-7-PARENT. Open your heart and home to a child today. Sponsored by the Department of Health and Human Services and aired in cooperation with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association. And this I'll never forget that moment. As long as I live. It was a moment. It was a moment that changed my life. We looked down from the chopper and saw the whole area was flooded. At that moment, it really hit me. This is why I joined the Guard. People had gone up to the rooftops to escape the rising waters. Talk about intense moments. We had to lower the guys on line some 30 feet down. This is where teamwork and training really paid off. It took steady nerves and steady hands for the chopper pilots to hover like that. No question, 
Cigar pellets are the best in the world. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life. What could be better than serving the people of my hometown? In the National Guard, you serve your community as well as your country while you work or attend college. In return, you gain skills in which you can build a career and receive benefits that can help you pay for college. Learn more about what it means to be a citizen soldier at NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Nebraska National Guard, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. We'll be right back. You're listening to Mike Vlasakis and Michael Hughes and the Omaha Junior Lancers Hockey Network. In a world where rivals are hard to find, one rivalry stands out. Midwest High School Hockey Rivalry. Omaha Junior Lancers versus Kansas City Jets and the I-29 Cup Rivalry Series. Catch the action at the Ralston Arena. Saturday, January 10th, Junior Varsity at 3 p.m. and the Varsity game is at 4.30. Second game on Sunday, January 11th, Junior Varsity at 8 a.m. and the Varsity game at 9.30. Pack the stands and show Kansas City who has the best support. Up in the morning to you. This is Fightin' O'Leary, and you're listening to Junior Lancer Radio Network. Plus this. Coming up next. Oh. Welcome back to Young Arita in Waterloo, Iowa. We're getting ready to uh, drop the puck as the players are just coming out on the ice and uh, getting into position. Um, Waterloo's up one to nothing uh, over the Omaha Junior Lancers. Second period action, uh, ready to get underway here. Omaha battling uh, in that first period, uh, started the game out uh, uh, very nicely, and uh, Waterloo came back and uh, got a goal. Puck is dropped and neutralized, back to Luck. Luck plays it in his own defensive zone. He's retreating behind his net. He's got four checking pressure by Cole Childers. Puck goes D to D to Johnson. Johnson plays it out. Die ball able to pick up the puck at the red line and dump back in. Johnson once again playing behind the net to Luck. Luck, the puck is intercepted in Childers with a, sh with a uh, dump shot in front of the net. Metcalf with a save. Childers once again with it. Metcalf plays the puck into the left wing corner. Thiessen now with four checking pressure. Grun on the angle. Gets to Luck. Luck throws it out in a neutral ice. And Siwa picks it up. Siwa gets pushed off the play at the Waterloo blue line. Johnson now with it. Can't gain the zone. Thiessen dumps the puck in, and Johnson finishes his check. Puck comes all the way the length of the ice into the Omaha zone. Diebald battling for it in the corner. Puck behind the net. And tucked in short side on Joe Schuld. That's an unfortunate play there. The uh, back linesman... Uh had his arm up for an icing call all the way and uh, uh, the far side guy decided to uh, to let it roll. Icing was waved. The puck came around behind the net and uh, the Waterloo player actually came came out from behind the net. Joe Schuld had the, the post covered up and he kind of faked like he was going to throw the puck net front. Joey moved and when he moved he opened up that uh, strong side post and he was able to tuck the puck in. Two to nothing. Omaha's got a little work ahead of them now. That's, uh, that's not how they wanted to come out and start this uh, second period. No. 15-42 um, left in the second period. Waterloo just scores early in the period. And they're in the Omaha end. This faceoff will be to Schuld's blocker side. Omaha just needs to stick to their uh, game plan. I, I think as long as they execute the game plan that Coach Blazek's put in place, they'll be okay. Um, they, they just got to get themselves uh, in that position. They just can't panic, and right now they're they're uh, bringing the puck into the Waterloo zone. Cody Walters on it on the half wall. He's got his back to the play. Puck's thrown out into neutral ice. Devin Renault on the chase. Makes a nice pass to Roach. Roach gets a shot on goal. Shield with a save. Puck comes out front, and another shot. There's a mass of humanity in front of the net. The puck is loose. Nets off. Nets off, and Cook blows his whistle. You can't push a goalie in with the puck and expect to score. <laughs> you could try. You can try. A lot of activity in front of that net front in Omaha's end. Joey, oh. Joey Schultz showed how athletic he is, uh, you know, trying to get across uh, multiple times, and uh, Waterloo had umpteen chances. Three big score. saves there by Schultz um, on quality shots going from strong side to weak side, and he was able to cover that net. 
typically you get a goalie moving across the net like that, you're going to pop one in. That's and, exactly uh, what you want to do is get a goalie moving just like that. <laughs> but Joey, Joey was up for the challenge. Puck still in the Omaha zone. Up the half wall and into neutral ice. Johnson able to play the puck back in to the Omaha zone. Cardona now with it. Has the puck, moves it up the half wall. Cole Childers tries to gain the zone. Now the puck's into neutral ice. Dylan Johnson now with it, just outside the red line. Indirect passes the puck into the Omaha zone. Kraus with it, goes D to D to Cardona. Cardona has it now. Regrouping behind his neck, goes half wall, goes weak side. Intercepted by number 11. Cade Sogling. Puck is now to the Waterloo end and played out to Sogling. Sogling tries to hit the weak side forward, loses control out to Johnson now. Johnson plays it up. The puck is fumbled around the uh, top of the Omaha blue line and dumped back into the zone. Kraus now with it. Soglin again battling for the puck. It's just a matter of will right now. And we have a whistle and a penalty. Right now I think the boys are too concerned about where the next hit is coming from uh, and trying to give the next hit and instead of just playing, playing the game and executing the game plan. And uh, in this case, uh, they ended up taking a hooking penalty. Cardona off, two-minute minor for hooking. So Waterloo will be on the power play with a two-goal lead. 13.42 left in the second period. They've got a pretty decent power play too, Mike. This isn't a, the type of team you want to you want to let take a power play too many times against you. Right now, Waterloo leads Omaha in shots 11-5, and we haven't seen much of that this season. Omaha on the kill, can't gain the handle. Seawin now with it, tries to indirect it up the half wall, goes to Johnson, Johnson able to keep it in. He's looking for someone to pass to. Down the half wall, intercepted by Childers to, to Thiessen, and Thiessen clears the puck. Puck is played out to shot, neutralized. He re regroups back into the Waterloo zone. Back to Yearling. Yearling now neutralized, gains the blue line and dumps in. Puck comes back around the Omaha net to Siwa, who is able to clear. Thiessen and Childers now off. Renault and Clark are on. Degnan and Siwa on the back line. Clark makes an interception, gets a shot on goal, wide of the net. There's a penalty coming up. Delayed call here. Yep. Interference maybe. Slash. Looks like 14 shots going off for slashing. Two minute minor. So they're even up here with uh, Omaha's got a minute four left on the pair or on the penalty to Cardona in a two minute uh, just beginning for shot. I know it goes away from the game plan from Blazik's uh, Coach Blazik's game plan, but uh, they might want to try stretching uh, Clark once or twice once they uh, get an opportunity and see if they can break him in for a. Uh, Maybe a quick shot or two. Well, they need to pop a goal here uh, to, to kind of get get control of the game back, or at least a, a you know a fraction of a it. fraction of it. Luck now with it is able to skate right into the Omaha zone. Prees now. Puck is low in the zone. We've got Cameron Prees on it. Clark is now with it. Degnan now with it. He comes across the blue line, drops it for Renault. Renault taking a look, gets a shot. Blocked by Luck and played away into the corner. This faceoff will be, well, looks like Cameron Preece is going off here. I was going to say, I, I, I looked away for a second. It looks like they're taking a white guy there. And Preece is going, number 21 is going for a check from behind. He'll be gone for 12 minutes. So Waterloo, one of the least penalized teams in the league. And this will take three of their players into the penalty box with the 
The check from behind call. Omaha now with it. Degnan with it. Back to Siwa. Siwa takes a look. Gets a shot on goal. Hits Thiessen. Goes out into the corner. Dybald now with it. Moves it over. Siwa to Childers. Childers back to Siwa. Siwa shrinking the zone. Trying to get a shot. Gets a shot. Metcalf with the answer. Metcalf's been there for the saves. Dybald now with it. Walking in. Getting a shot. And Sam Metcalf... Devouring that puck. He's a big target. Takes up a lot of space in that net. Doing a very good job of, uh, of taking that shot away. 38, 38 seconds left on this two-man advantage. And this draw will be just to his blocker side. Metcalf, the fourth leading goaltender in this league. Dybald now with it. Needs to dish the puck to Siwa. Siwa with it to Childers. Childers back to Siwa. Siwa faking the slap shot, moving it to Dybald. Dybald back to Siwa. Siwa fans on, on the it. shot. Luff dumps the puck back into the Omaha zone, and Siwa's back to retreat and retrieve. He gains, gains the net, comes out with speed, moves the puck up to Grun. Grun can't gain control of it. Played up the half wall. Zach Grun now with it back down to Childers. Childers back to Grun. And Omaha's down to a one-man advantage right now. Grun with it on the half wall. Comes out with it, moves it over. Tries to move it over to Diebald, and it's... Got to move quicker on those. Redirected by shot into neutral ice. 24 seconds left on this power play. Clark now with it. Moves it back up the wall. To, De to Degnan. Degnan back to Clark. Clark now with it in the corner. Back to Degnan. Waterloo able to keep Omaha perimeter here. Shot with a great opportunity out front. They get Metcalf out of position and cannot bury the puck. Cardona and Shot battling for it in the Omaha zone. Shot now throws the puck in front of the Omaha net and the penalty is over. Teams are even strength now. Degnan back to Cardona. Cardona finds Clark. Clark. Clark's, got, Clark's got to get that speed of his going, and right now he looks slow. Clark reeling in the neutral ice zone, gains the zone. The puck's chipped out. Luck now with it. Headmans it to Roach. Roach back to Luck. Luck with a great opportunity, and he scores. Omaha is slow as they're going right now on that back check. That's what caused that goal. They didn't back check hard. Slow is, is slow is not the word for it tonight. Could be bus legs, but this Waterloo team is not that much better than Omaha. I don't know that they're better at all. It's just uh, right now we're, uh, this Omaha team is just not playing up to their potential. Absolutely not. And they're, they're giving Waterloo everything they've gotten tonight. Childers on the draw. A neutral ice against Almarez. Omaha dumps it in. It's 3-0 with 9.13 left in the second period. Zach Rune on it. Moves the puck up. Dalton Thiessen now moves it up the half wall to Dybald. Dybald gets a shot on goal wide of the net. Seawin now with it. He gets a shot and clanks the post. That's his daily dose of iron there. Die ball with a shot. Waterloo does a great job of fronting their net. That puck didn't even get through to Metcalf. Seawin now with it, sees Clark. Indirect pass right on his tape. Clark's in the zone. He's got speed. He beats Johnson. Johnson falls, but he takes Clark's stick with him. Jesse Clark coming off now. And Waterloo with an icing call. This puck will come back down into the Waterloo zone to the glove side of Metcalf. That'll be Omaha's right wing faceoff circle. Noah Payton on the point along with Stephen Degnan. Clark on the faceoff with Cody Walters and Devin Renault. Renault tries to gain control of the puck and three Omaha players get tied up in the faceoff circle and Waterloo is out 
on the fly. Now Roach with it. Gets a shot. Strong side to weak side. Schuld with a blocker save. Another save by Schuld. Walters now with it. Clark with it. Into neutral ice. Gains the blue line. Makes a nifty move. Gets behind number 24, Dylan Steck, but cannot gain control of the puck. Now he gets shoved into the net. As the net comes off its moorings, the play is blown dead. Jesse Clark tried to split the D after that uh, errant pass came back into the zone, and uh, he got hauled down, and the Omaha bench was calling for a penalty, but not to be at this time of day. And this faceoff will be just outside the Waterloo uh, defensive blue line, the right wing faceoff dot in neutral ice. Kemp ready to drop the puck. The puck is dropped, and Sloan loses the draw, goes back to Johnson and Luck, who play the puck D to D. Omaha looks like they're just skating with a piano on their back. Absolutely, sluggish all the way. Nobody's moving their feet. The time and space element goes away when you can't move quickly. Cardona now with it, gains the zone. Waterloo indirectly plays the puck off the glass and the puck leaves the playing surface and the play is blown dead. This is Michael Hughes and you're listening to the Omaha Junior Lancer Radio Network. Both teams changing lines here. Groon, Childers, and Tyson out. They've been quiet tonight along with Siwa and Diebald. Very good line. This is the type of game you want your top guys to uh, step it up and uh, produce, and so far that's not happening. Pucks move down to Tyson. Tyson tries to find his defenseman up at the, the blue line, and um, there's just a lot more space here. Couldn't find him. The puck went into neutral ice. Almar is now with it, and he's rushing the puck into the Omaha zone. He falls down. Siwa plays it for Diebald. Diebald rushing the puck up. He gains the red line, trying to beat Luck. He goes wide of Luck. He's got time. He fishes it across the net front. No one there to redirect. <clears throat> Siwa plays the puck off the corner, loses the handle, but is able to keep the puck in the zone. Game's getting progressively chippier here. And this draw will be just outside the Waterloo defensive blue line on the left wing faceoff dot. Walters out with Clark and Renault. Puck's drawn back to Johnson. Johnson with control, loses the handle. Jesse Clark. There's a penalty coming. Hooking. We've got a hooking call. Otherwise, Jesse Clark would have been away to the races, I think. Number two. Dylan Johnson, two minutes minor for hooking. And Omaha will go back on the Associated Fire Protection power play. 16, or, uh, six minutes and 16 seconds left in the second period. Three to nothing, Warriors. Cardona with the puck. Gets moved back to Diebald. Cardona dumps it into the strong side corner. Renault now with it. Cody Walters comes out. In his feet. Tries to tuck it around the short side. Nothing there. Walters again with it. Makes a move toward the center of the, the ice in the Waterloo zone. Degnan with a nifty move. Gains control. Lux on the forecheck. We need to double up on that puck. <coughs> Clark now with it from behind the net. He's being forechecked by... Connor Luck, Renault up front, tries to fish through. Jesse Clark with a shot, and Metcalf has the answer. Got to put some muscle behind those shots. Puck is dumped in from just outside the red line by number 14 shot. Could have been ruled as an icing. Oh, there's another one. Waterloo just to hold down Cardona. Good speed now by Childers. Childers gains the zone. Throws it in front of Metcalf. And we have another delayed call. 
Sounds like the fans here in Waterloo love referee Cook tonight and every night. <laughs> Ironically enough, some of Waterloo's best players, uh, a team that's the least penalized team in the league, uh, some of their better players are going off. Uh, Dylan uh, Johnson in the box right now along with uh, Kyle Schott. And I think Omaha is, uh, what, four minutes so far tonight? They're, they've actually been very <laughs> disciplined uh, compared to other years. They win the draw. Diebald plays the puck back to Siwa. Siwa gets a shot on goal. Can't score. Another huge save by Metcalf. Oh! Childer Childers was just railed into the net. Number 15, Connor Luck, who's been known to be a chippy player, throws Cold Childers into the net, and Dalton Thiessen takes exception and goes after him. Thiessen is now off. You know what, to protect a teammate, I guess that's that's one way to do it. There was no reason to uh, throw him into the net like that. And uh, I don't know that Dalton needed to come like that, but uh, I commend him for protecting his captain. No call on luck, so it's going to be Thiessen out on this one. Although uh, Kemp and uh, Cook are talking, the linesman and the uh, head official are are discussing what, what happened in front of that net, and it was clear that Dalton Thiessen was defending his, his line mate. Um, Connor Luck has, has been around for... Well, he's a senior. He's a senior, you know, yep. four years, and, and uh, he's, you know, he's been one of the Waterloo penalty leaders through the years. Uh, absolutely, and uh, he may have got away with one there, but uh, um, again... I commend Dalton for uh, sticking up for his captain. So as we sort this out, we've got 4.45 left. Waterloo has 29 seconds on Dylan Johnson's penalty and a minute 49 on Schott's penalty. They lead 3 to nothing. And incidentally, it looks like uh, Captain Cole Childer Childers will be all right. He did get up after that. Apparently it, their conversation uh, wasn't about uh, Connor Luck tossing uh, Captain Children. Yeah, I think the their bar. conversation was how to get rid of Dalton Thiessen, and uh, That's unfortunate. he's getting tossed. That's too bad. It'll be interesting to see what this uh, call is going to be. You know, even though Omaha's down three zip, uh, these guys, these stripes are, uh, are missing a good game. Well, the banded one, Cook, is uh, in a discussion now with Captain Cole Childers, and ironically enough, Connor Luck. Yeah, who luck, luck shouldn't look since he was uh, who part perpetrated of that. the entire yeah. thing. He shouldn't be a part of this conversation. <laughs> Looks like five minutes on the board there for uh, Tyson. I I don't know how that's justified. No, absolutely. Maybe a double minor for rough. Maybe head contact, but not a five-minute major. Come on, Cook! So we've spent the last, oh, roughly four and a half minutes trying to sort this out. And the draw will be just outside the Waterloo blue line. They gave him a five-minute major head contact per point streak. So they did give him a head contact. Looks like Omaha has to put a player in the box. He must be a fan favorite here in Waterloo. <laughs> we have some zealous fans. <laughs> Looks like uh, Dominic Zambudo, number 37, is going to serve the two minutes for uh, Thiessen. Or the, excuse me. Five minutes. Five minutes for Thiessen. You don't hear five minutes a lot. And ironically enough, Connor Luck is still on the ice. That's terrible. That was a terrible call at that <laughs> point. I'm sorry. I... I try to be as unbiased as I can, but when it comes to that, when well, clearly when you could see. When you know, you're doing commentary in these games, you have to stay unbiased, but when the, when the perpetrator of the entire incident is still out there. Absolutely. Makes it tough to swallow. And yes. Then, and then our player comes out of the pony box and gets cross-checked by the Waterloo player. I, I, I don't see how that could be missed. Cook needs to get his head out of his uh, tail and... Uh, 
Diebald finds uh, Renault and neutralized. Renault slowing the play down. The puck is stolen and thrown into neutralize where Siwa retrieves. He goes D to D to Jared Cardona. We're Cardona's playing. gonna gain the red line and dump the puck in. And we're playing four and four hockey for the next 46 seconds. Omaha does not win the race to the puck, although w Walters moves it out to Siwa and Siwa with a shot and a save by Metcalf. Now Omaha is uh, narrowing the gap a little bit on shots. It's 13 to nine now, but uh, they got a long way to go to make it up. Well, the key thing here is to keep their composure and not get involved in the the officiating of the game. Sure. It is what it is. There's nothing they can do about it. They just need to move on. Play above it. Looks like we got another player that's down after getting cross-checked from behind. It's Childers. He's coming off and onto the bench. Groon's out now. Waterloo gaining control and moving the puck into the Omaha end. A shot on goal. Joel Schuld with a big save and a huge rebound. Our feet are so slow right now, Mike. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. We're not able to get our feet moving and uh, get any momentum going. Clark with it. Although it looks like uh, Waterloo's got another penalty coming. Not sure who and number 12 maybe. Once again, Noah Roach, one of Waterloo's top players, is joining his teammates in the box. Kyle Shaw, two, the two leading scorers on the Waterloo team are both in the penalty box right now, along with Cameron Prees. Yeah, he should be coming back here shortly, I would think. 2.57 left in the second period, 3 to nothing Waterloo. Luck now with it behind his own zone or his own net, and he's just going to rag time. Puck is stolen away by Siwa. Siwa tries to make a nifty move. Shot is now out of the box and back into the play along with Luck. Luck dumps the puck and wraps it behind the Omaha cage. Diebald brings it up the half wall and tries to indirectly gain the zone. The puck comes out to Johnson. Johnson. Gets over there, moves it D to D to Luck. D Luck dumps back in. And we're still playing four on four hockey here for uh, a few minutes. Renault with it. Moves it into neutralized for Cody Walters who f takes a fall. Gains the zone. Renault's rubbed out of the play and the puck moves into half, half wall into neutralized where Shot has it. He moves in, gets a shot on goal, and Schuld with a cover-up. 153 left in the second stanza, 3-0 Waterloo. Omaha's going to have to come up with some sort of a plan here in between periods to get themselves back in the game. A quick, Right now, if they could get a quick goal towards the end of this uh, period, it would certainly help go towards that. 209 left on the Dalton Thiessen uh, major penalty. That'll carry over into the next, penalty, or next period. Here's Jesse Clark showing a little bit of speed. Gains the blue line, tries to find Childers, and Childers is driven off the play by Steck. That could have easily be, been called interference. Absolutely. Cole Childers was on the weak side wing and was being held up by number 24, Dylan Steck. Trying to get to the net to make a play and uh, wasn't allowed to. In this game, you can't uh, use body contact when you're not around a puck. And, and uh, Childers was probably 20 feet away from a puck. Draw now just outside into the neutral ice. Left wing dot. Waterloo wins it. Number 11 comes in with it. That's Cade Sogling. Throws the puck behind the Omaha net. Clark now with it. Tries to move it out to Childers. Our feet are just Omaha is just having moving. a heck of a time moving their feet. Puck's thrown back in. We have an icing call. This will come back to the Waterloo zone and be faced off just to the glove side of Sam Metcalf. Braxton Hatch, Devin Renault is out now with Diebald and Siwa with a minute 18 left in this second period. 
Hatch with a win. Back to Siwa. Siwa goes D to D to Dieball. Dieball gets a shot. Redirected by Sam Metcalf off his blocker to Connor Luck into the strong side corner. Luck comes out with a puck. Devin Renault missed his check on, on Luck. Renault now with it, gains the zone. See what chips it up. He's one on one with Johnson. Makes a move, gets a shot. Metcalf with a save. Metcalf's been the difference, I'll tell you that tonight. Absolutely. We've had our chances. Offside. Sorry. <laughs> Got ahead of myself there a little bit. Well, he was offside <laughs> by about 15 feet. Now Johnson is shoving Siwa in front of his own bench. This is, I, I can only imagine what the third period is going to look like at this point. Um, the Cook is just not in control of this game at all. I don't think I don't know that he ever was. Well, it could get a lot uglier, that's it, for that, sure, that's with a 3-0 lead absolute, going into the third. Absolutely. I hope our boys will keep their heads, but a lot of these things we're seeing isn't uh, from the team that's down by three right now. Johnson with a pass Off, to shot finds that, him in another, neutral ice. Another offside uh, miss there. Pucks in neutral ice. They go uh, uh, to Johnson. Johnson finds shot. Shot gets in. Gives it to the weak side. And Schuld comes off. The net comes off, and, and uh, puck goes behind it. It's interesting how, uh, how the white team's been able to get away with those same type of uh, penalties that Cardona just got. But uh, he does the exact same play, and he gets called for two minutes for slashing. This draw will be in the Omaha zone to Shields' glove side. But you know, the bright side is seven sec seconds left in this period, but Omaha's not out of this game just yet. No. There's plenty of game left. Childers on the draw. Cole wins the draw back to Siwa. Siwa has it on the corner, and he's going to just let time expire. That ends the second period. Waterloo Warriors three, Omaha Junior Lancers zero. You're listening to the Omaha Junior Lancer Hockey Network. Don't go anywhere. Old House Contracting. Custom built impressions. At Old House Contracting, our specialty is transforming homes and leaving lasting impressions. Through quality craftsmanship and courageous design, we'll bring your vision to life. Contact us today. 402 573 8125 oldenhousecontracting.com Oscar's Pizza and Sports Grill proud supporters of the Omaha Junior Lancer High School Hockey Program to carry out 402-758-1910 Oscar's Pizza home with the big O Never forget that moment. As long as I live. It was a moment. It was a moment that changed my life. We looked down from the chopper and saw the whole area was flooded. At that moment, it really hit me. This is why I joined the guard. People had gone up to the rooftops to escape the rising waters. Talk about intense moments. We had to lower the guys online some 30 feet down. This is where teamwork and training really paid off. It took steady nerves and steady hands for the chopper pilots to hover like that. No question. Guard pilots are the best in the world. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life. What could be better than serving the people of my hometown? In the National Guard, you serve your community as well as your country while you work or attend college. In return, you gain skills in which you can build a career and receive benefits that can help you pay for college. Learn more about what it means to be a citizen soldier at NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Nebraska National Guard. Aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. We'll be right back. You're listening to Mike Vlasakis and Michael Hughes and the Omaha Junior Lancers Hockey Network. In a world where rivals are hard to find, one rivalry stands out. Midwest High School Hockey Rivalry. 
Omaha Junior Lancers versus Kansas City Jets in the I-29 Cup Rivalry Series. Catch the action at the Ralston Arena. Saturday, January 10th, Junior Varsity at 3 p.m. and the Varsity game is at 4.30. Second game on Sunday, January 11th, Junior Varsity at 8 a.m. and the Varsity game at 9.30. Pack the stands and show Kansas City who has the best support. Welcome back to Young Arena in Waterloo, Iowa. We're joined here in between the uh, first, second and third period uh, with uh, Colin Price of the uh, Omaha Junior Varsity uh, team. Welcome, Colin. Welcome. Er, welcome. Hi. So, Colin, uh, give me uh, your thoughts on the first half of the Junior Varsity season so far. I believe we're doing well. If we keep it up, not going into games, thinking that we have a cakewalk to keep playing tough, I think we'll do well for the rest of the season. Absolutely. Uh, after watching this uh, varsity game so far after first two periods, do you kind of think that maybe is uh, something that uh, maybe uh, the varsity team kind of thought it's going to, you know, you know, we're, we've, we're on 11-game win streak, uh, Waterloo, we, we can beat them? I think that might have been a little bit of the problem here, but I feel like Waterloo, they're getting a couple lucky bounces, but I think that could be a main problem for this game. Absolutely. Well, uh, just a couple of quick questions. Uh, when did you uh, start getting involved in hockey, and uh, what inspired you to play? I got involved in hockey around kindergarten, probably when I was five or six. Just inspired to play, probably. I was watching TV. I watched a lot of NHL as a kid. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, with within your uh, team this year, uh, you know, you're, you're new to the high school program. You've played, uh, as you mentioned here, uh, you know, over over the years, you know, all the way through up uh, uh, through Bantam and. Uh, what do, what do you think of uh, this program and uh, the team that you're playing on this year? I think this program's great. Um, it's definitely a step up. Gladiators and Omaha Merge, I thought that was a great thing. Playing on this team has been fun. People know their limits when it comes to messing around, but we do it all in good fun. Absolutely. Um, do you do anything uh, as far as pregame ritual, anything that you specifically do each, uh, each week? Nothing special. I guess I just get here, get my sticks out of the bag and tape them up and then focus. And uh, during the summer, do you do anything to keep yourself in uh, conditioning? Or is this kind of new, uh, the conditioning portion of it for hockey? I mean, every, every year teams want to condition and, and be ready for the season. But as, as a junior Lancer program, we, we start our, we have an off-ice uh, conditioning program during the summer. And then, uh, I'm not sure if you participated, but, but and then we start our own off-ice starting August, around August 1st. Um, what, what have you learned um, from being in the program, and what have you done what did you used to do? Uh, I used to run in the mornings. Uh, I went downstairs, lifted with some dumbbells. But mainly I realized that my limit's a lot farther than it thought it was. And I think that working out in the summer with your team is pretty fun. Absolutely. And uh, who's your favorite hockey player in professional hockey right now? Probably Pavel Datsuk. And why is that? I guess I just kind of jumped on that Red Wings bandwagon, I guess. That's kind of why. <laughs> How do you play? In, uh, how do you feel about playing in front of uh, fans at your home rink or uh, on the road? Uh, they're great support. Uh, when I'm playing, I, c I can tune out the crowd fairly well, so a lot of stuff doesn't really bother me. Nervousness isn't really an issue. And, and as as far as uh, the fans go, I mean, do you get pumped up? Do you like to see lots of people out at the Ralston games w uh, at home, or oh, or, yeah. would you, or would you prefer it to be kind of an empty, quiet atmosphere? I prefer it to be packed. Nice and rowdy. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we've uh, been joined here today on the uh, Omaha Junior Lancer Network with uh, Colin Price. And, uh, Colin, thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Junior Lancer Hockey on the Omaha Junior Lancer Radio Network. Next, don't go anywhere. Foster parents are good people. Foster care benefited me in a lot of ways. It opened up my eyes to see where I wanted to go to in the future. Someone that I barely knew was opening her arms and her home to me. That was when I knew there are good people out there. Foster parents are needed all across Nebraska. Please call 1-800-7-PARENT. Open your heart and home to a child today. Sponsored by the Department of Health and Human Services and aired in cooperation with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. We'll be right back. You're listening to Mike Vlasakis and Michael Hughes and the Omaha Junior Lancers Hockey Network. 
Join us this Tuesday, January 6, 2015, for the Red Line Show. This week, we will recap the weekend in Waterloo, discuss the upcoming weekend against the Kansas City Jets, and Kansas City General Manager Gary Scavona will join us to discuss the I-29 Cup Rivalry Series, plus coverage of the Midwest High School League and the Olden House Contracting Twitter poll results. Listen to us on OJL Livestream or follow us on Twitter at Redline Show Oma or Facebook on fb.com backslash Redline Show Omaha. The Redline Show, Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. on OJL Livestream. In a world where rivals are hard to find, one rivalry stands out. Midwest High School Hockey Rivalry. Omaha Junior Lancers versus Kansas City Jets and the I-29 Cup Rivalry Series. Catch the action at the Ralston Arena. Saturday, January 10th, Junior Varsity at 3 p.m. and the Varsity game is at 4.30. Second game on Sunday, January 11th, Junior Varsity at 8 a.m. and the Varsity game at 9.30. Pack the stands and show Kansas City who has the best support. At Sid Dillon Chevrolet, certain words mean everything to us. Service. Selection. Plus over 3,000 vehicles at SidDillon.com. A lot has changed since I opened the first dealership, but one thing remains constant. The Sid Dillon team is committed to you. You have our word on it. Because we have our name on it. Sid Dillon. Top of the morning to you. This is Fighting O'Leary, and you're listening to Junior Lancer Radio Network. Olden House Contracting, custom-built impressions. At Olden House Contracting, our specialty is transforming homes and leaving lasting impressions. Through quality craftsmanship and courageous design, we'll bring your vision to life. Contact us today, 402-573-8125, oldenhousecontracting.com. Hi-ho, Kermit the Frog here, and you're listening to Omaha Junior Lancer Radio Network. Join us this Tuesday, January 6, 2015, for the Red Line Show. This week, we will recap the weekend in Waterloo, discuss the upcoming weekend against the Kansas City Jets, and Kansas City General Manager Gary Scavona will join us to discuss the I-29 Cup Rivalry Series, plus coverage of the Midwest High School League and the Olden House Contracting Twitter poll results. Listen to us on OJL Livestream or follow us on Twitter at Red Line Show Oma or Facebook on fb.com backslash Redline Show Omaha. The Redline Show, Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. on OGL Live Street. Plus this. Coming up next. Oh. Welcome back to uh, Young Arena in Waterloo, uh, Iowa. And uh, just to get a recap on uh, on Midwest High School Hockey League scores, uh, my apologies for uh, uh, spacing out on that. We're looking at uh, final scores uh, from earlier today. You've got Kansas City uh, beating Lincoln 7-2 to at the varsity level, and they also uh, did the same thing at the uh, JV level, beating uh, Lincoln 5-0. to uh, Other finals today, Des Moines Oak Leafs beating Mason City Mohawks 3-1, to and uh, uh, JV at Sioux City beating Quad City 6 to nothing. Games in uh, progress right now are is the uh, Des Moines Oak Leafs uh, leading Mason City uh, one to nothing at the JV level. And uh, in six minutes and 59 seconds left in the uh, varsity game, Sioux City is losing right now to Quad Cities three to one. And in our game here in uh, Young Arena, your Waterloo Warriors are leading your Omaha Junior Lancers three to nothing, sh- out shooting Omaha Junior Lancers 17 to 10. And uh, back with me is uh, Mike Vasakis. Mike, uh, that second period uh, saw Waterloo pop two goals in and uh, go up three to nothing. And, uh, well, we saw quite a few penalties go on the board as well. Penalty filled second period. And uh, Waterloo, uncharacteristically, uh, their top players taking a lot of penalties. Um, Omaha was called on a couple. Uh, you know, really, Omaha hasn't had that many penalty calls, but the one against Dalton Thiessen really hurt. He's, he's our leading scorer in Omaha. And uh, having him out the remainder of this game and I'm assuming and, and, tomorrow, and tomorrow absolutely yep is uh is quite a uh, quite a blow to the team um a little of the things that we talked about in fear of a team coming back after a two-week break it happened last year it happened to several teams last night right and and it appears that it's happening here as well um do I think this Waterloo team is better than Omaha no uh not by long shot but 
they're better than Omaha playing on their own ice. And Omaha right now is skating like, like they all have pianos on their backs, frankly. And uh, the energy level is not there. The urgency is not there. Uh, th you know, I'm sure the boys are playing with a lot of want to. It's just that for some reason the legs aren't responding. Right, and and hard, hard to say bus legs or not. They, they seem to have a lot of energy and, you know, uh, chatter on the bus on the way here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a short bus ride by any means. But, uh, th you know, they had a good lunch and uh, seemed to be good to go. And, uh, again, third period, there's still, still 17 minutes left here in this game. Uh, maybe they can come out and get something done. A lot of energy on the ride here, a lot of energy at lunch, a lot of energy once we checked into the hotel. And just positive energy from the time we got here. But, you know, you and I discussed that a little bit. You know, that could go two ways. And um, right now it's evident that uh, uh, it's not going in the direction that they wanted to. Omaha with a, almost practically a season low on shots on goal with 10 through two periods. Absolutely. They've been averaging roughly about 23 shots a game. And, uh, you know, they've had some season high. You know, I think they've... Uh, Cedar Rapids, they had one where it was almost 60 shots, and you know, like I say, this is season low. So, and we've had two opportunities with two man advantage. So, um, you know, we just got to get more pucks to the net. We got to get more people in front of Metcalf because unless we do, unless Omaha is able to get traffic in front of the goaltender, they're not going to beat him. Absolutely not. He he covers that net so well. Um, you know, he's, I think his list is, what, six foot five uh, on, on the program. And, uh, yes. And, uh, you know, a kid that size, if he, you know, even though when he goes down in, in a butterfly, he stretches across and he takes a lot of that open side, you know, open net away at the bottom. And, uh, you know, at top, he still covers most of the net because he, he's so tall. He takes a lot of space up in that net. And, and you know, not that he's, um, he's an overly skilled goaltender, uh, but just by virtue of his size... Um, you, you know, teams have a tendency to shoot the puck right at him. You right, know? right. Uh, if you look at the 10 shots that Omaha has had against him, I bet you seven of them he caught right in his belly. Oh, so, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, there weren't any he, – He's not. they're not getting him to move. He's not moving weak side post to strong side post and back and forth. And, and the way you beat a guy like this is getting him to move between the posts. Absolutely, kind of like what they did with uh, Joe Schuld, moving back and forth, back and forth. Joey just was standing on his head and keeping the puck out. Uh, yeah, I but mean, there was a barrage of three, three different shots where, where Schuld went from one post to the other and made three spectacular saves. Players are now in faceoff uh, center dot. Pucks drop. Childers dumps the puck into the Waterloo zone. Metcalf plays it off behind the net for Luck. Luck picks it up, reads the, the forecheck. Omaha is down two men right now, and Childers with a big hit on uh, Waterloo's number 12, Noah Roach. Waterloo's set up. Johnson with it now gets it to 35. Brandon Yearling, their power play goal leader, and he gets a shot on Schultz short side, and Joey comes up with a save. What do you think Coach Blazik uh, talked to the team about in, the, in between periods there, Mike? <laughs> what's, he, well, what's he looking for right now? I tell you what, I, I mean, I wish I could have been a mouse in that locker room, but we were up here. But um, the, um, you know, I think he's, I think he's telling them sustain pressure. Um, and it, hold on here. It looks like Devin Renault is down, reeling in pain. I think he got cross-checked on the hands, or slashed. Yeah, he's holding that wrist. Yep. He's, he's changing up here, but uh, no call on the play. This puck will be dropped uh, just outside of uh, uh, the Waterloo uh, blue line here. Clark on the faceoff. It's on Omaha's uh, right wing faceoff circle in neutral ice. He drops the puck. Braxton Hatch is taken down by Roach. Johnson now with it. Tries to play the puck up the half wall does so. Puck's moved over to 35. Brandon Yearling, he enters the Omaha zone, brings the puck into the corner and stalls. Finds Roach behind the net. Noah Payton on him. 
And now shot coming in for backside support. Moves the puck back up to the point to Johnson. Johnson over to Steck. Steck throws it into the corner for Yearling, and Yearling behind the net to Roach. Roach back up to Steck. Steck back to Roach. Roach walking in, shrinks the zone up, and gets a great shot on Joel Schultz. Schultz able to redirect it behind the net. Puck comes to the half wall. Steck able to keep it in on a race with Jesse Clark. Omaha down one man for 19 seconds here. Roach with it in the corner. Omaha with a passive box right now. Puck comes out to Steck. Steck to Roach. And Jesse Clark able to save the day by throwing the puck back into the Waterloo end. And that will expire the one-man advantage. 15.07 left in the third. Teams are even strength now. Waterloo is offside. They drop the puck back to Johnson. Johnson back to Luck in their own defensive zone. Luck loses the handle. Clark, or excuse me, Renault with it. Can't gain the handle on that puck. Gruden now with it in the corner. Tries to make an escape move and moves it up the half wall. Renault barely can get to the puck. Comes out to Groon. Groon goes weak side to Cole Childers. Childers showing a little speed coming into the zone. Throws it in front of the net. Metcalf directs it off behind the, the cage. And now number 23, Trevor Katz, brings it out. Katz into the Omaha zone. Diebald picks it up. Waterloo, three players deep. And Omaha cannot launch a shot on a three-on-two. Luck with it, plays it up the half wall to Shot in neutral ice. Shot escapes, finds Yearling. Hatch breaks up the play, and Waterloo's back into neutral ice. They gain the red line and dump in. Schuld with a stop behind the net, and we have a whistle offside. That's odd that they uh, blew the whistle down at that point in the game where Omaha was coming around to pick up the puck. Usually on an, in, on an offside, if they're calling it intentional like that, it usually comes down the other end of the ice. Or at least the, the far uh, neutralized faceoff circle. Abso yep. Absolutely, and, and it just came out to a normal dot. So it kind of disrupts the flow of the game at that point. Clark on the draw. Waterloo comes up with it. Clark gains it in neutral ice, loses the handle. He's staying with it to Cody Walters. Cody Walters dumps in the zone. The puck goes behind the Waterloo cage and played by Steck. Steck now with it. He eats the puck. Clark gets drilled in the, in the weak side There's corner. A penalty being There's called. a delayed call here. On Waterloo, maybe. Yep. Delayed call on Waterloo. We've got a rough. Looks like referee Cook's having trouble staying on his skates. Keeps, uh, keeps losing his balance there. I mean, he, he might be so like some of our kids, went pond uh, skating and forgot to sharpen his skates. Shot off, number 14. That's his second penalty tonight, or maybe even his third. Kyle Schott, one of their better players. Off for two minutes, roughing. Omaha goes on the power play. Childers on the draw to Metcalf's glove side. Drops it back. Renault with it. Gets it to Dieball. Dieball dumps it in the far corner, and Childers on the forecheck. Renault back for backside support. Grun now with it behind the net. Loses control and Warriors able to gain the zone. Omaha regrouping in their defensive zone. Siwa with it. Moves it up. Tries to move it up to uh, die ball. And uh, right now Katz with four checking pressure deep in the Omaha zone. Omaha's coming in. Five on three. Drops it back to Renault. Renault gets a shot. Saved by Metcalf. Story of the day right there. Got to pull the trigger. Siwa now with it. Makes a move. He's Some, into the Waterloo zone. He's into the corner. The net. Shoots it far side. Renault now with it. Gets to the top of the circle and tries to throw the puck in front of the net. Intercepted by Connor Luck into neutral ice. Luck now with it. Dumps it into the Omaha zone. 
Devin Renault throws the puck up the half wall. Cole Childers now with it, showing a little speed. Goes wide, gets taken out of the play by Stegling. Cody Walters backhands the puck into the zone, gets blocked by a Waterloo defender. And Scores. Cody Walters off a pass off the strong side post from Jared Cardona. Barry's one five hole on Sam Metcalf with 11.37 left in this third period, which brings Waterloo's lead to two. Three to one, Waterloo. That's all it takes, Mike, is a, is a little shot, flip shot towards the net, and uh, you, you don't know how it's going to bounce and how it's reacting, and honestly, that's really why Waterloo's up three to one is for those lucky bounces. Yeah. Joey Schultz played pretty well. Uh, he just hasn't had a lot of support in front of him. Maybe this is the start of good things to come. Cardona finds finds Clark. Clark makes a nice move and shoots it right into the belly of I was Sam say, Metcalf. There's that chest again. Yeah. We talked about that in between periods. Uh, you know, out of those shots, probably about seven or eight of those were to the belly, and, and there's another one. Shift uh, change here, and they're going with um, Ian Sloan centering the puck with uh, Berkowitz on the right wing. And Angelo Perry on the left wing comes out to Siwa. Siwa tries to fish it through. Can't do it. And shot. We're two on one. Two on one with Diebold. Schuld with a save. Siwa now with it up the half wall. Tries to find Burko. Burko now with it. Gives it back to Siwa. Siwa tries to get around him and is interfered. Got a call. Got a call up. Number 24 for Waterloo. Interference. Dylan Steck, he really had no choice. No, see, no see what otherwise see, see what would be in alone. See what would have blown the doors off of him <laughs> if he hadn't gotten in his way. So. No, no, I mean, for, for him to make that decision, it was probably the right right decision to make. Um, Waterloo fans don't feel the same way, however. <laughs> I get a kick out of doing these games. You know what? It doesn't matter where you go. Nobody's ever happy with officiating. <laughs> Well, everybody's got a different perspective on, on how this game's supposed to be played. I guess that's what's part of the fun. Yes. Let's see if Omaha can uh, pop another one here quick. Omaha wins the draw. Puck comes out to Dieball. Dieball moves it over to Siwa. Siwa's loaded for Barry. Gets a shot on net. Got a blocker. Got a blocker in front of the net. I think, uh, I think Waterloo defensemen have stopped more pucks than Metcalf. Waterloo now with it. Luck tries to find... Uh, Katz. Katz loses the handle. Two Childers one. is two on one with Grun against Johnson, their biggest defenseman. Luck makes a nice move, and now they're two on two back on Omaha. Luck loses the handle. He's getting four checking pressure from Gruen. Puck's wrapped around. Cardona picks it up, and now he's out. He's going to gain the zone. He tries to find tries to find Grun and goes tape to tape with. Yeah, well. That's what happens when you give the puck away in your own zone. Turn Cardona, over, Cardona makes a terrible play. Goes ta tape to tape with Kyle Schott, who shoves it over to, uh, I believe it was number five who was crashing the net. Turnovers will kill you every time. But nothing Joey Schultz could have done on that one. Nolan Bartlett uh, finds the puck on his stick on the weak side post with no one to cover. Terrible defensive zone turnover. That was a shorthanded goal there for Waterloo. Clark now with it. Omaha's back in the Waterloo zone with 53 seconds left on this power play. Cody Walters well, it's hard to lobs the puck on net. Mike, it's hard to uh, keep a power play when you've got one, one of your power play specialists uh, you know, ejected for a head contact penalty that we thought was maybe questionable as far as a major penalty goes. Clark with a nice shot on net off the faceoff circle. Luck shoots the puck out into neutral ice. That that last play right there it, it just kind of tells you how out of tune that these linesmen are and the officials. Puck clearly went off the players on the Waterloo bench, and he was going to allow Omaha to continue playing it. <laughs> Clark now with it at the top of the faceoff circle. They'll be facing off. Omaha still has 26 seconds left 
on the power play. Sewell with the shot. It's redirected by a, a fronting Waterloo defender. Like I said before, Omaha's got 14 shots on net, and I think they have another 14 that, that Waterloo defenders have blocked. Absolutely. Goes to show you, Mike, the little things. P playing on the defensive side of the puck, fronting pucks, blocking shots. That's the difference in games, and I think that's been part of the difference in this game. Absolutely. I think you're right. Omaha's kind of shot themselves in the foot, but those other things are, are also integral parts of why Waterloo's ahead 4-1. to one. Yeah, I watched that play coming in on the blue line, and we were doing too many of those fancy moves at the blue line instead of gaining zone and, uh, you know, they, they, we, we talk about it all the time, turnovers, five, five feet inside, five feet outside, and that's what those turnovers can hurt you. And, and uh, the goal that last goal the Waterloo scored was a, a turnover about five feet inside the zone, and, and it was a pass straight on their tape, and, yeah. you know, uh, you know that, that, that hurts you. Cardona with a nice shot there. Metcalf defect, deflected it off, and Omaha's back to Cardona. Cardona makes a simple play, dumps it around. The strong side wing wraps around, and Larry Mercer is on it. Mercer forechecking Roach. It was a good forecheck by Larry. Zambudo now with it. They gain control, moves it out to, to uh, Mercer. He can't get in position to get a shot. Roach again with it. Roach moves it back, drops it off for, uh, for um, shot, and it's intercepted by Sloan. That's off there. And they come in and try to wrap short side on Joe Schuld, and the net comes off. This draw will be, should be, It's going to be just uh, to the blocker side of Joel Schuld in the Omaha zone. Cole Childers on the faceoff. He's going to go against Al Almeras. Almeras loses the draw. And Childers, excuse me, Siwa plays it out into neutral ice where Luck gains control. Puck goes in off sides, no whistle. I mean, we were watching a linesman down here talking to an o the Omaha bench, not even paying attention to the line. Well, Connor Luck pulled the puck, pulled the puck out of his zone, out of the Omaha zone, across the blue line, when his far side forward was probably three feet in the zone. It's amazing what you can see from up here. It is, and, and you know what? I, I might add, uh, Young Arena has a pretty nice venue here, and uh, oh, great venue, great, great spot for us to to broadcast from or attempt to broadcast from. <laughs> Pucks drop back to Siwa. Siwa gains the red line. He's coming in with speed. He's going one-on-one. -on -one. He beats Steck. Gets around Steck, still with the puck. Moves it up the half wall. Dieball now with it. Dumps it back into the corner for Zagrun. Grun's got time. He tries to shorthand. Stuff it. He tries to stuff did. it on the wraparound. It almost did. Metcalf with a big save. Pucks out to Siwa. Siwa's teeing it up. They're, they're stuck with another block. Puck comes out of the zone. Die ball plays it for Siwa. Siwa back. Gains the red line and dumps in. Cole Childers chasing now along with Luck. Luck brings the puck out from behind his own cage and finds weak side forward. And Waterloo dumps in and changes. If Omaha does a quick up here, they can... Not even paying attention. Die ball's got ice in front of him. Now they got to get somebody to the net. Die ball with a shot wide of the net. We're reaching for the puck, Mike. We're not skating, moving our feet. We're just reaching for it. And Steal things, by Roach. Yep. Feet standing still, and that's what happens. Jesse Clark trying to poke check the puck into the Omaha zone. Cardona plays Roach off. Puck jumps over Clark's stick. Die ball there for the quick dump. Cody Walters in on it. Steck tries to play the puck. Back for Braxton Hatch. Walters now with it. He tries to play it up to his point with two four checkers in between him and his defenseman. He's 
Clark with it. Back to Walters. Walters dumps the puck in. Johnson now with it for Waterloo. And directs it out into neutral ice. Bump transition to, to Shot, who still has control. Being forechecked there by Angelo Perry. Shot love throws it up front. Luck gets control and launches a shot wide of the net. Trying to gain a zone here. Can't do it. Katz now with it. Walks in. Shoots. Shield with a blocker uh, save. I was going to say that looked like it left the ice. Puck came off the half wall. All Omaha had to do was push it 10 feet to the blue line and gain a zone. They weren't able to do that. And the puck came out to uh, Shot, who passed it over to uh, Luck, who got a great shot on goal. Prees now with it. Prees has been a relative non-factor in this game. Yeah, once he went out with that check from behind, I really haven't seen much of him here. But you know what? They haven't needed him. Berkowitz out now with Sloan. Peyton on D with Siwa. And Perry, the other forward. Trying to move the puck out of their end. Coach Blazek trying to mix things up to get some energy flowing here. 429 left in this one. 4-1 to one, Waterloo. Looks like we're just going to play a dump game and uh, hope, hope we get something. But Puck comes out into neutral ice. Played back in by Omaha. Back out by Waterloo, and Cardona dumps the puck back in to the Warrior end. Waterloo's just content with uh, dumping it out to middle ice. They're just the playing keep away right now, absolutely. and they got a weak side forward wide open. Both defensemen on the same side of the ice. Childers with a shot. Metcalf with a great save on a hard shot. Follow up by, by Grun. Goes wide of the net. Puck comes out into neutral ice. Schlegling tries to play it. Moved up to Childers. Waterloo with a delay call here. Yet another Waterloo penalty. Waterloo penalty looks what? like number two, Johnson. Dylan Johnson is going off. Yeah, we thought earlier in this period he probably should have had one. Uh, as, oh, yeah. Uh, he... he uh, Took a shot at Siwa uh, in, in a change, and, yeah. and there was no call there, but uh, he finds himself uh, in the box right now. And it looks like maybe a uh, 2 and a 10 for... Not sure what the call is. We, uh, we haven't seen an indication by the ref. Nope, I didn't see the call made, but it, he's uh, taking another guy over there. Whatever the call is, it's 2 minutes and 10, but the referee has not given a hand signal yet, so... We'll wait to hear what the PA announcer says. Three nineteen left in this one. Looks like point streak shows. Checking from behind. Checking from behind on Dylan Johnson from Waterloo. Simple uh, hand gesture would have uh, cleared that up for us a lot quicker than that. <laughs> Especially since the internet here is uh, so sloppy. Oh. And then we're and he's calling one on us for that. He has to be calling retaliatory on that. Yeah, Luck came out and uh, leveled um, Braxton Hatch right at the blue line high. And uh, Cardona, in turn, leveled him. Well, I don't think they're giving it to Cardona. I don't think they know who's getting it because Cardona's coming to the bench. And we have some... Uh, some uh, Gracious Waterloo fans who are trying to help uh, <laughs> referee Cook with uh, who to and, put in the box. And they're putting the wrong guy in the box. And they're taking Cody Walters, who wasn't even on the ice, I don't think. I don't think Walters was even on the I, ice. I, I won't agree with you there. I don't think he was ever on the ice either. <laughs> well, well I, I mean, I'm, I'm glad sure they took him and not one of us. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not sure what the uh, penalty is being called, but uh, if it's a, yeah, I don't know. Well, the penalty's interference. They uh, got the wrong, even our coaches are telling them you got the wrong kid, it's number 10. Yeah, uh, Cody Walters was not even on the ice, so. Uh, 
Well, number 10 doesn't want to exactly walk over the skate over there. Yeah, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> yeah, that was me. And, and the referee, I mean, you've got coaches on both sides telling them who it should be in there. and I, I, it's, I don't know. Now, if he makes the change, this is the first time I've ever seen anything like this. How often do you see a ref change his mind? And there's Mr. Casebeer. Well, he, he went out, skated a circle, came back. Graciously giving him a, a drink of water. Well, and I guess I'm just hoping it's not a major penalty because Cody Walters would not deserve that. It has to be a minor penalty, I'm guessing. It's only two minutes on the clock. So, Well, Luck stepped up and, and, uh, and really uh, torched uh, Braxton Hatch, and, and Cardona happened to be standing there, and Luck's momentum came into Cardona. Cardona stood him up and, and dropped him. And uh, he got the retaliatory call. Yeah, they gave a two-minute interference. Well, Waterloo right now has 10 penalties. Uh, still two minutes and 59 seconds left. Remember last year's game in Omaha where uh, both Coach Blazek and Coach Dietz were uh, sitting Sunday morning's game due to too many penalties on, their t on each team. Yes, it was penalty fest that day. Both coaches had to sit for excessive penalties for each team. Siwa with it into neutral ice, gains the red line, dumps it in. 2.48 left in this game. Steck on it. Backside support from Renault. Siwa trying to handle the puck. He's coming into the net, trying to get a shot. Cannot get the puck through. Blocked by a defenseman for Waterloo. Cardona with a slash as Priest comes into the zone with a puck. Puck's played into the corner. Priest throws it out. Schul's able to deflect it. Oh, and, oh. Head up, head up. Oh, maybe he can still reach it. <sighs> Play there by Siwa trying to find Clark. He was splitting the defenseman. He came in on Metcalf and was uh, taken down by Steck. And both players slid into Sam Metcalf and his helmet was... Uh, Dislodged. What, I, what I can't believe is he was hauled down. That there isn't even a two-minute minor on that. Well, well, yeah, yeah. The because, puck wasn't there, because, so because you've got two water players, you've got the defender that chased back checking, and then you've got Metcalf that came out to meet him, and and basically an interference call at most, or at the least. Yeah, because you're impeding his play. I mean, you know, as a goalie, you're coming out to play it. You take your risk. At I that think point. interference would have been the call since the puck he couldn't get to the puck. Dieball steps up. Shot on goal by Grun, saved by Metcalf. No. Minute 41 left here. Shot now with it. All I know is Omaha shot themselves in the foot today, and uh, you know, still a minute left in the game, but hopefully they can come out uh, with a different mindset tomorrow morning. Well, you know, the thing about these away games, you want to you want to keep the streak alive, you want to keep getting points, but you know, realistically, if you come to a place like this and you can achieve a split, uh, you're doing well. Absolutely, yep. But they're going to have to find some legs for tomorrow morning, I'll tell you that yeah. right now. Well, it's going to be imperative to get these boys fed and watered and in bed tonight, early. <laughs> we'll have to find some place open in Waterloo to do that with. <laughs> Seems like everything around this town uh, closes at 10 o'clock. We, we made some calls early in the day to find a place to take the team, and uh, every place we uh, reached out to it was 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. closing. Steve Degnan just uh, shoved uh, Connor Luck across the blue line, uh, a zone away from the puck. Luck went down pretty hard, and uh, Degnan knew immediately he went right to the box. 49 seconds left in this game. 49 seconds I left, call of, it a game. left of chippiness, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to gather. I just hope Omaha keeps their heads about themselves. They've been doing pretty good this season, so let's, uh, let's hope for the best.
Waterloo now with it on the regroup. Looks Gaining like the zone and a neutral ice. Looks like this will finish it out. 27 seconds left in this. Clark now with it. To the red line, finds Siwa in alone on Metcalf. Metcalf makes the save. He's been the difference maker. What a difference maker. And that was not an easy shot to save by Siwa either. Well, the thing of it is, is he stopped 17 sh Omaha shots and and Waterloo defenders and defensemen stopped probably another 17. Another 17, absolutely. That well, Metcalf didn't even... Yeah, I mean, they were blocked before they got to him. Yeah, I can tell you right now, it'll give uh, Coach Blazik a, a different look on game plan. I, 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 you know, with Dalton out for tomorrow, um, lineup will change a little bit, but uh, I think he's going to make some, uh, some shuffling outside of that as well. Yeah. 7.6 seconds left in the third period with Waterloo ahead, 4-1. to one. Waterloo leading the shots on goal, 24-17, to 17, but like we've been talking... The majority of these shots from Omaha have been blocked by Waterloo players. They front very well. They play great in their defensive zone. There's the whistle, and that ends this varsity tilt. Waterloo Warriors win 4-1 to one over the Omaha Junior Lancers. You're listening to the Omaha Junior Lancers Hockey Network. Folks. <laughs> 